Hello there. Today we're going to be looking at the Undead Zone of Silver Pine Forest. I thought I'd sneak this one in just before the two Barons videos as it is a very spooky zone and we are just about rolling up to Halloween. The Barons videos will though obviously be coming right before BlizzCon. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Gorfang. So first up we have Gorfang, a level 13 wolf that patrols near Molden's Orchard, just to the east. He is probably the first rare you will encounter as he's right on the road into Silver Pine Forest. He doesn't really have anything special about him, you can pick him out by his nice little white coat. And that's about it really. As for loot, he has a slightly increased chance to drop greens and that is about it. No unique loot for this guy I'm afraid, but then again, he is only level 13. Old Vicejaw Up next we have Old Vicejaw, a level 14 bear that hangs around just south of Deep Elm Mine. Old Vicejaw is pretty similar to Gorfang in the sense that he only really has an increased chance to drop greens, nothing more than that. Not too bad though as he's quite near the road and it's pretty easy to just pick him up and kill him. Crethys Shadow Spinner Up next we have Crethys Shadow Spinner, a level 15 Black Widow Spider that hangs around at the back of the Skittering Dark. Overall this mob is pretty disappointing, you head all the way out there and only has a slightly increased chance to drop greens. So overall if you are looking for greens, you know, why not kill it, but other than that there's no real reason to. Dalaran Spell Scribe Okay, so now we've seen some of the lamest mobs in Silver Pine, let's look at the coolest. Up next we have the Dalaran Spell Scribe, a level 21 and highly sought after rare that sits in Amber Mill. The Dalaran Spell Scribe is particularly sought after as it's the only rare that drops the cat carrier for a black tabby cat. Now, I have some bad news if you're on Alliance. You cannot kill these guys, these are all friendly to you. So, the only way to get hold of this cat on Alliance is to buy it from the neutral auction house, unfortunately. So here, Horde really do have the advantage. Not only does it drop the cat carrier, but it also has a 25% chance to drop the Chandler staff, as you see I got here. It has a 25% chance to drop the Jewel Encrusted Sash, and a 5% chance to drop the Dalaran Wizard Robe. Overall, this is a must-have for anybody who's in the area. The problem I would say is that this rare is really well known, has a really variable respawn rate, and also is pretty often camped by players. I've heard a few stories of people literally just logging out inside the town hall and logging in every couple of hours to see if it's there. So if you do manage to see this and snag it, you hit it at just the right time. The cat carrier itself does sell for a fair bit, uh, unfortunately on neither of these attempts, I've killed this thing about four times, on none of those attempts I actually managed to get the cat carrier, it's a 20% drop chance. If you can get it though, it can sell for a considerable amount of gold, I would definitely sell it on the neutral auction house, as it's the only way for Alliance players to actually obtain this. Don't forget there is also a chest that can only be opened by Horde players in the corner of the room as well. Ravenclaw Regent Up next we have the level 22 Ravenclaw Regent. I'm just going to show you quickly how to get to Baron's Peril because a lot of players don't actually know how to get there and it's really really well hidden. You'll see here on the video there's loads of trees blocking the little pathway up and this is the only way up to the cave entrance. So once you're at the cave what you want to do is head straight to the back, that is where the Ravenclaw Regent is. He does hit fairly hard, but other than that he doesn't really have any special abilities. As for loot, this guy is really interesting actually. Um, I'm not really sure why the higher level mobs in Silver Pine seem to be super interesting, but they are. The Ravenclaw Regent has a 75% chance to drop the Regent's Cloak, and a 40% chance to drop the Raven's Claws. Both of the items are actually really good for casters, much like the Dalaran Spell Scribes drops. 
Raven's Claws is particularly good as I believe it's one of the best in slot or the best in slot item pre-24 casters. So if you do manage to get those, I would probably consider selling them on the auction house if you need a bit of cash. As if being best in slot gloves for level 19 twin casters isn't enough, Raven's Claws also look damn cool as well, so that's another reason to sell them on the auction house. I wouldn't underestimate the power of people wanting to look awesome. Rothide Bruiser A short swim over the lake to Fenris Isle for our next one, the level 22 Rothide Bruiser. You'll find him near the western wall on Fenris Keep and he's normally surrounded with two or three guards. He actually has some really good drops, a 75% chance to drop the Ruffian Belt and a 25% chance to drop the Bruiser Club. Like most of the mobs here, he also has a 5% chance to drop a quest item called a Talking Head. Overall, pretty good drops. Snarl Main. Up next we have our last and highest level rare with Snarlmane at level 23. Snarlmane resides inside of Fenris Keep which is a stone's throw from the Rothide Bruiser. If you're in the area you definitely need to try and see if you can take both of them out. One of Snarlmane's spawn locations in the keep is actually this basement here which if you are really really lucky he will spawn in here and that's absolutely great because you can get in and out. Failing that you're going to have to go the long way and you're going to have to go to this little hidden nook that you can also spawn in. Fenris Keep is ruled by Thul Ravenclaw, I believe, in Vanilla WoW, so you definitely want to watch out for him. He can hit really hard. He's an elite in the main room. As you can see here, I had to go up through one tower, and I had to come down through another down to this ledge. You'll find Snarlmane right at the bottom, nicely hidden away. Killing him is not that difficult. He doesn't have any particularly um, damaging spells or anything like that. And as for drops, they're semi-decent. He has a 25% chance to drop the Flesh Carver, which is a pretty good at weapon. And other than that, if you don't get that, you're probably going to get a green off him. The good news is that because he's high level, the greens are at least sellable on the auction house. So that just about wraps up the 7 rares, their locations and drops inside of Silver Pine. As you can see, early level not too great, just an increased chance to drop greens. Later on, some really interesting items and some amazing gold farming opportunities if you're willing to put in the time. As always, let me know what you thought of the video in the comments, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, please do subscribe to the channel.